got me thinking a little bit. This is, has some correlation, again, maybe a bit of a stretch, but this might have some correlation to what's been going on with Michael B. Jordan, a little bit. So I'm sure most of you guys are aware, again, it's a bit of an old story, but recently, Michael B. Jordan, a um, new film, Creed, I think it's Creed 3, came out, right? And he's been going viral on flipping um, social media because he's on a red carpet for his movie. I think he's actually, he's actually, I think he actually produces it too. So whatever, right? So his movie that he's in, starring in, he's on a red carpet and he gets interviewed by this woman called L'Oreal. And this lady was somebody that went to high school with him. And in a previous interview, before Creed came out a long time ago, the, um, she said in an interview that when she was going coming up in school, all her, her and her friends used to tease and somewhat bully Michael Jordan because they thought he was corny. Because he was, you know, I don't know, he, he was all about, you know, making it as an actor. He was working out a bunch. According to her, he used to carry his headshot around places, tell people about his dreams and stuff. You know, just kind of, you know, a go-getter type in school. We've all got them. We, knew, we all knew that personality of somebody who was kind of, you know, acting like a star when they were, like, in high school. We've all seen that person. So every reason, um, her and her friends didn't basically vibe with it and kind of teased, it, teased him about it. Obviously, some years passed along the line, and now here's Michael B. Jordan on the red carpet of his movie getting interviewed by this girl that used to tease her, and she brings it up in the interview. She brings it up. And Michael B. Jordan, I think, does the most subtle, I think, and the best humble flex ever, because if that was me, if I'm Michael B. Jordan, and somebody used to quote-unquote bully me, especially a girl, especially a black girl, you know, whatever, racially ambiguous, but let's say a black girl, especially a black girl, if she bullied me in school back in the day and now she get teased and in a predominantly black school by another black girl and used to giggle every time I'm walking by in a hallway and throw things at me and say little jokes or quips at me or whatnot and not invite me to parties and all that sort of stuff and just tease me for being somebody that didn't want to just smoke weed and chill out and I was actually chasing my dreams. If I was him and I suddenly turned into Michael B. Jordan, I would be shitting on you so hard. I'd be laying my entire ball sack on your forehead. The entire thing. The entire ball sack on, on your forehead, skin and hair included, the in, like, like a little hat, like a little toupee, lying it on your head, saying, how do you like me now? That's what I'd be doing. But Michael B. Jordan is way more classy than I am, and he didn't. He just did a slight little, you know, I know who you are, Ting. Let's quickly play the clip here. Jordan, the director mm -hmm. and the star of Creed 3. And you know, we know each other. We go way back all the way to Chad Science in Newark, okay? Oh, the corny kid, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not say that. <laughs> Misquoted for sure. <laughs> Look at his face. I did not say that. Misquoted for sure. She's like, no, uh, I saw it. I heard it. I saw it. And the original quote itself, if I, don't, if, I don't, if I remember correctly, looking up at this page, it's got the actual quote of what he said, right? Was this. Um, this is what she said, the woman herself. She says, uh, on this article, scroll up here. That's when L'Oreal, went, who went to school with him at 7 to 11, 7 to 11, sorry, 7 to 12th grade academy in New York, back in the day, said in regards to the corny comment that he definitely gave the vibe to his classmates. At the time, he was trying to get his career off the ground as a young model and actor. She admitted they were always making him the butt the joke so making fun of him in school basically even if you're a girl it doesn't matter that he's a boy and you can probably beat her up the fact that you're making someone about the jokes essentially you're bullying them so that's basically what they were doing um she says you know what's so crazy i went to school with michael b jordan at that point in my life um we went to chad science academy together in newark to be honest with you we teased him all the damn time because his name was michael jordan let's start there and he was no michael jordan that is pure hate already, right? Um, she said, he also would come to school with a headshot and we lived in Newark. That's the hood. We would make fun of him like, what are you going to do with your stupid headshot? And now look at him. So she's even hating till this day. She's still hating, which you have to give her props. You know, she's continuing to hate, continuing on. But I would say all this to say, to take into account the, the flipping um, Jamarant story, this is kind of the the issue and some of the kind of hassles of kind of being black in general, right? Because on one side, you've got this kid who kind of wants to proliferate, who kind of wants to kind of adopt and sort of like, you know, absorb and kind of play up to the image of being like some sort of gangster because of the music he listens to or because of what he sees in culture overall and maybe because of where he's from, blah, blah, blah. Even though he hasn't grown up in those circumstances, right? He kind of idolizes and puts it on some sort of level. He wants to be a quote-unquote real N-word. But then on the other side, you've got this guy, Michael B. Jordan, who by, from an early age, 
He already says in interviews that he didn't drink, he didn't party much, but he was always on job. And if you think about it, I think he was in The Wire really early on. He was in Friday Night's Lights. Like, clearly he had a a goal and a dream, aspiration that he was trying to kind of aim for. And he was really laser focused, even from that age. So because of that, and because of how he carried himself, he was corny. And he got teased and mocked for it. This guy grew up really good, really rich, really nice in Jamaran and never really exposed to a ghetto in any kind of way. He makes it, sees that culture now becoming popular and wants to adopt it and he's looked at as quote-unquote being real. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's, it's a nonsense. Either way, it's a nonsense. Just be yourself. Just actually be comfortable in your own skin and be happy with whatever way you grew up. Whether you grew up in the slums and you had to get it from the mud, cool, credit to you. Keep it going. No one cares. Do you know what I mean? Still become a decent human being. It doesn't mean because your circumstances are horrible that you have to kind of be like that until, you know, until your adult ages. Grow up, mature. That's great. But also, if you become, if you're the corny guy, don't try and adopt to be the hood guy to kind of fit in because you never know that corny role could make you become a multi, multi, multi millionaire and a global star, which has made flipping Michael B. Jordan. And I don't even think he's corny. What's actually corny about him? I think the only thing that's corny about him is the fact that he clearly doesn't, you know, he clearly isn't shy of a camera. He clearly likes to take his top off quite a lot, likes to work out. Maybe he's not the greatest actor, but the corny thing, I've never really understood in the most part, but I just find it interesting, the kind of parallel between Ja Morant and Michael B. Jordan in those kind of stories going forward. But the funniest part for me has definitely been the reaction from other people, and one of them being Joe Budden. Joe Budden decided for every reason to kind of get involved and sort of lend his ear to it. And if you're not familiar with Joe Budden, one of the things to be familiar about him is is that he's a consummate hater like he kind of embraces the fact that he's a hater but he also has a list of people that he hates for a specific reason like for instance like he hates Tyler the Creator randomly because one time I think at like a I think at like a Rock the Bells or some sort of festival somewhere I don't know which one it was um, when when um, Odd Future were first coming up he was booked the same day that they were playing and they got into the same area of the festival behind the scenes and you know how Tyler and Earl and all those guys were back in the day they were crazy so they were acting the way they were acting back in the day but that was Joe Budden's first experience ever seeing them and he immediately got put off and since this to this day he still hates Tyler the Creator because of that one flipping interaction so it's really really and Tyler must have been like I don't know 19 or 17 or something at those ages so he's that kind of guy and for whatever reason he's got a thing uh, for hating michael b jordan like just a consistent thing and he always takes the piss out of his acting on the podcast when i used to listen to it and just as a running joke so when he saw that clip of him basically dunking on that girl on the cat on the red car on the red carpet he took it as a chance to kind of remind people that he thinks michael b jordan's corny which is super ironic because everyone calls joe budden corny like he's the height of corny the pictures he takes the outfit he wears the fact that he loves to get involved in flipping women's business the fact that his music career never really reached the heights of his podcast everything about him is corny so the fact that him labeling other people corny is absolutely hilarious but let's hear joe budden's rant against michael b jordan and what his thoughts were at the time so Dog, you doing that to a girl true. is some corny. I can see that. You being that Michael B. Jordan today, uh, allegedly sexiest man alive my, in all of these blockbuster my... movies. I agree. During your highlight week, you've probably never been more visible than you are right this second. And that's what you do to her. And if I bring back them white girl rumors, then it's going to sound even crazier. <laughs> Then it's going to sound crazier because why are you talking to our sisters like that on the red carpet? We only you talking to white people like that. Boo. He tried to play up into the, white, the the sisters thing and try and be the advocate for black women, which is hilarious because if anything, if anything, Joe Bunnan's got a really extensive and ferocious history of really disrespecting black women or women full stop. Do you know what I mean? You don't want to get into the abuse flipping allegations because I was a former fan of the podcast. I don't want to besmirch his name. But for him to suddenly stand there and become like the advocate of black women, especially with the most recent story of him when he tried to make the network and one one former host of a show that was on his network basically alleged him alleged that he was, you know, being sexually uh, what's that word called? Of sexual misconduct, of being too handsy during the hug. And the backlash behind it. And basically, they kind of essentially gaslit her a little bit and made her go into hiding. It was a real big kind of messy affair. But she was a black woman. And he really did disrespect her by, you know, basically overstepping the line and whatnot. So him kind of trying to spin as a black woman thing was legitimately, legitimately one of the most hilarious things. And 
He also tried to defend that lady. He was trying to defend her. That's the thing. That L'Oreal, that L'Oreal woman, he was trying to defend her and try to basically say, hey, she's a black woman. Don't besmirch her. Respect her. Black queens and whatnot. Blah, blah, blah. And he threw in that little quip about the white woman thing because people, you know, allege or throw this label at like Michael B. Jordan that he doesn't really like black girls, even though he dated Laurie Harvey for a long time and maybe other people were there. I don't know, whatever it may be. But my thinking, I was thinking as well, this is a weird stretch to go on. Imagine if you're Michael B. Jordan and you're a black kid growing up in New Jersey, going to a school in the hood or whatnot, even if performing arts or whatever it may be. But, you know, you're getting teased for your name. People thinking you are trying to be Michael Jordan when you're not and you can't play basketball and shit. You're being teased because you like to be professional and you have dreams and you don't want to go out and you're a bit different and stuff and whatnot, whatever it may be. You're being teased all the time. It's predominantly black school. Couldn't it be understandable if that's the origin story for why he is maybe... He maybe prefers dating non-black girls. Could that be the origin story? Is is that is that not acceptable? Like, imagine if that is a legitimately your experience that like you got bullied the entire time you were in school. No black girl will give you any love, any joy because you weren't necessarily hood looking or you didn't carry yourself a particular kind of way. Wouldn't it be understandable if all you liked were non-black girls because they were the only ones who accept you for who you were? That would make some sense, wouldn't it? It would make some sense. But you say that out loud and people start. I mean, talk about the oh, boo! That that, that, uh, that Dave Chappelle scene, boo! Do you know what I mean? So I want to throw stuff at you, but it could be the truth. That's like an actual legit villain origin story, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. Anyway, the funny part about it, just to end this segment, is that the woman that he was defending then went on to her own podcast and invited this other lady called Rocky. So it's like Rocky, Rocky for real, who was a former fan, former close friend of Joe Budden, who's now one of his most fiercest ops. Like, this lady is, like, so rude when it comes to disrespecting Joe Budden. And she really hates him. Like, I don't know what happened between them. I don't know if it's some, like, you know, lover's tiff and they, they messed around behind the scenes. I don't know what happened, but this Rocky girl was really close with Joe Budden at one time and they fell out. And now any time that she gets in front of a microphone and they ask her about Joe Budden, she does not, she does not, she does not waste time to really let the clip run and let people know that, nah, I don't mess with that guy. He's a piece of shit, blah, 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 blah. And she did it on that girl's podcast. So the girl that he was trying to defend got one of his fiercest enemies on there and she absolutely ruined him. And this is a clip about it. Absolutely crazy. Um, we went through a, a lot of shit back and forth with like, okay, we're best friends. We're not best friends. He's, he's, he's a head case. And I'm yeah. someone that likes Aww. to study people and try to figure them out and analyze them. Like I can fix this dark motherfucking uh, life. Oh, you he, want he from the dark side. I'm always <laughs> him. I'm that. Miss I'm fix like, it. Miss fix it. I'm like the Oracle. I'm like, I'm that person. Mm -hmm. So I got to the point where it just was, um, it was just a little bit too chaotic for me and his last situation with, mm -hmm. um, that came to light with his baby moms who I was, cool with and, yeah. and i played the, the rescue ranger for her too and that that backfires after i was like that oh, always shit. happens like, yeah. was he bisexual then um as far as i'm concerned he's a flu <laughs> was he bisexual then excuse me like i'm trying to defend you as a black woman and you're just out in me <laughs> that's what joe budden gets for whip including himself in women's business that's why as a man you should never include yourself in women's business stay chat like me i stay chatty patty with men stuff right i'll talk about the job the bird brendan Schaub stuff the joe rogan stuff but i never mention families i'm never getting involved in all the girl stuff and whatnot there's some stuff with the you know annie lederman or whatever maybe but for the most part i leave all that family shit alone none of my business and also you know you don't want to throw don't throw stones in the glass house we all have our issues when it comes to that sort of stuff but when you're a guy and you actively take part and try to include yourself in shade room stuff this is what happens man you get shaded fluid man okay and so I, you like, already knew this. so i said this on hot 97 10 years ago what? it was like what rewind, rewind, rewind 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 okay. and, and I, you like, already knew this. so i said Let's this on hot again. 97 again. Please happens. Like, yeah. was he I bisexual then um as far as i'm concerned he's a fluid man Jesus. Okay, so and you I, like, already knew that. So I said this on Hot 97 10 years ago. And it was funny. like, what would you say that about him? I, I always called him my gay bestie. Oh my God. And what's so funny is, um, <laughs> and this isn't a revelation. He, I, I know. No, he said things on his own podcast. Yeah. And I'm asking because sometimes he plays it off like he's joking. But then when he but said that, I would have broke his ass in half talking about talent, little things. That's his skill. Like, Let's, he's, he's able did you hear to say, that episode? 
No, I didn't. Um, yeah, he, he said, said no, he would have broke Little Fizz's ass in half had he seen I believe a picture of his asshole earlier. Have you ever heard anything? I thought, I thought he, I, if back you back. had said that, he said that, I would think that he's talking about fighting. Like, yo, what the no, fuck are you doing? No, he was wow. showing his asshole, his, a picture of his asshole leak. Why he showing? Why he want to look at that? Fizz? Yeah, well, because he likes men as well, I guess. So he so, smashed him, he gets smashed. Is he sucking or he's getting I guess if you're saying you would have broke him in half, you got to be the top, right? right? Look where we are in flipping cultural conversations as a community, quote unquote, as black people, right? Where if you're, if you're the one receiving, no, if you're the one, yeah, if you're the one receiving, I don't know, oral or whatever, if you're the one giving other types of sexual acts, then it's okay. Then suddenly they don't want to, you know, refer to you as a as a race as a slur. Use the f word on you. But the moment you're the person who's maybe the quote unquote bottom, they completely emasculate you. They, uh, you know, they paint you out to be effeminate and stuff. It's so bizarre, isn't it? I, I always find that stuff really bizarre. If anything, really being hyper focused and concerned about what people get up in the bedroom, especially people who live a lifestyle that you don't live, is I think the most sussy and suspect thing ever. That really says more about you than them. If you're really like in tune or everything, you know the terms, you know what happens and stuff. That says more about you, that like you're kind of wondering what he does there, what he does there. Why are you wondering? If that's not your life, why do you care? <laughs> but this is where we are in culture. This is where we are. Crazy. I think things can be interchangeable. That's true as well. Get out of so here. That's your first thought. I just would think like that's Here's a top thing. That, that is a talent of his where he's able to tell you like some real bold faced truth. Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I, I, I didn't I didn't punch her in the stomach. I grazed the side of her ribs. And, and nah. then everyone's like, oh, he's just joking. I don't know what nah. type of Jedi mind trick he got going on in the world, but um, it works for his benefit. But yeah, there we go, man. Joe Budden got himself involved in women's business and it backfired in the biggest way possible. And to be honest, he has no one to blame but himself. No one to blame but himself. And I just thought it was absolutely funny, the whole backlash behind it. I thought Michael B. Jordan, to end in conclusion, Michael B. Jordan dealt with that, I think, supremely well. It wasn't a big deal. It was what it was. She basically brought the subject up. I don't think if she brought it up that they went to the same school, um, that she that he would have said what he said. She brought it up and then he reminded her, yeah, I know who you are and I heard what you said on, the, on your little podcast. And now here you are interviewing me on my red carpet at my movie, essentially. Look how the tables turn. Look at life. Look at God, right? Like relax. Like treat people nicely all the way through life. Doesn't matter if they're going to be someone. Just treat people nicely in general cool calm she gets a message she gets she gets viral she gets a little five minutes of fame then for every reason all these other people come up and start talking about these hit pieces oh he's not corny uh, Joe, and then joe Biden, essentially who already hates michael B. jordan uses this opportunity to kind of try and beam over the head and then as karma would have it as life would have it another woman comes out and says no actually you know what you're bisexual <laughs> it's like whoa <laughs> <laughs> and the <it> blue <laughs> everything gets blown up but again like i said man just everyone should mind their business leave people alone cheap people with respect be nice to everybody and we can all live a somewhat quasi nice normal life